If you're familiar with my channel, you know I do all of my music production on the iPad Pro. Unfortunately, in typical Apple fashion, the Pro moniker comes with a pretty hefty price tag. And I know for a lot of people that are just getting started in music production, something like this is out of the picture. Well, I recently picked up the current budget iPad, the iPad 7th gen, and we're gonna find out how well this thing stacks up for music production. What is up creatives? I'm Jarrell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. I make weekly tip and tutorial videos as well as product reviews on all things music production. If you enjoy that kind of content, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you won't miss the next one. So let's go ahead and get price out of the way because everything we talk about today is going to be tempered by price. So the iPad Pro I was referring to, the one I have is the 12.9 inch, that starts at $999. The 11 inch version of the iPad Pro, which has all of the same function, all of the same utility, is actually just smaller, um, starts at $799. So your entry level into the Pro territory is $799. This budget iPad, the iPad 7th gen, starts at $329, less than half the price of an iPad Pro. If this thing can get the job done, you're going to save yourself a pretty penny, but we're going to talk about some of the trade-offs that come along with that savings. So the first thing you can notice, it's a 10.2 inch screen, significantly smaller than my iPad Pro, which is right here. And it's actually obviously smaller than the 11 inch iPad Pro. You can probably tell there's some pretty chunky bezels around here. You don't get that full screen display. Also, you have touch ID. There is no face ID on the budget iPad. Couple other differences between this iPad and the iPad Pro. There's no ProMotion display, so you're not getting the 120 hertz refresh rate for all the smooth scrolling and things like that. Also, this display is covered in plastic. It's a plastic cover, it's not glass. And I know for some of you guys that's a deal breaker, you don't like the feeling of cheap plastic, but I will say this plastic does not feel that cheap. It actually feels pretty nice to use. Um, you sometimes don't realize you're actually touching plastic. It kind of feels like you're touching glass. As far as the internals go, this iPad is rocking the a10 chip by Apple. It is a less powerful chip than the A12X that is in the iPad Pro um, or the new A12Z which is in the updated 2020 iPad Pro. So you're getting a bit of a downgrade in processing power. Also, no USB-C on this iPad. You have a lightning connector right here and that's gonna affect how you plug in your peripherals We'll get to that in a second. First, let's talk a little bit about the things that are very much the same between these iPads. This iPad is running the exact same iPad OS as the iPad Pro, which is super impressive. All the same functionality is here. You have your today view over here in the slide over. You have all of the same multitasking gestures as the iPad Pro, all of the same file management and file support, and all of the same app availability. That's nice. So earlier I mentioned that there's a lightning connector on this iPad instead of USB-C. That means you're gonna need to get some different kinds of adapters. So right here I have a lightning camera connection adapter. And I will note, this is not the official one from Apple. Um, I have been able to use this and it works just fine for what I'm doing. And I'll show you that in just a second. But if you want to ensure that you're gonna have the maximum support that things will function the way you want them to, I highly recommend getting the actual Apple adapter. Either way, either adapter has a USB-A over here on this side and a lightning port here. You're going to want to connect obviously all of your peripherals through this USB port and you got to make sure that you are plugging it in to power with this lightning connector. And I'm going to show you guys how I did that with my setup. So all of you that know the channel know I have my desk set up to where all of my peripherals run to a USB-C hub and that USB-C hub runs to one singular USB cable, which is this one right here. Problem is, the USB-C cable can't go into the regular iPad. So what we're gonna do is, I've got my lightning charger cable, which I'm going to plug in to this adapter here. 
Then I have this additional adapter, which is a USB-C to USB-A adapter, which I'm going to plug in here. Then I'll take my USB-C cable, plug it directly into this adapter, and now we have a functioning setup. And we can just take that, plug it right into the iPad, and boom, there we go. So with all of that plugged in, all of my gear is now officially connected to this iPad, and it all functions with a couple exceptions. So my hyperdrive USB-C hub that I have attached to my desk is connected and fully functions. It reads my SD cards, reads USB, reads the headphone jack, and accepts power. The only thing that isn't functioning right now for me is the USB hub that I have in the corner of my desk um, with some of my peripherals connected to it. And I've determined that I believe the issue is that I have that hub running to another hub, which is running into my USB-C hub. Um, when I connect it directly to my hyperdrive hub, everything functions fine. So I imagine this device might only support a certain amount of chained hubs. So something to keep in mind. Again, the adapter I use is not the official Apple adapter, so you might have different results with the official one. Anyway, let's finally jump into Beatmaker 3 and see if we can make a dope beat in here and see how well it performs under pressure. So, got my headphones. Let's load up Beatmaker 3. Now I've already dragged all of my files over into BeatMaker 3. All of my samples and everything are in here. That process was pretty painless. It's almost exactly the same as my iPad Pro with the exception of having to connect things using the lightning connector. The file management, all the same. Let's go ahead and open, uh, let's make a new session. The thing I'm most interested to see is how well this thing performs with plugins. Um, because I know those can be pretty CPU intensive on the iPad. So let's start with loading up a plugin. On this bank, I'm gonna go here, add plugin. Let's add Tines by Club Grand. Loaded. Let's see how well our Bluetooth MIDI controller connects to this iPad. In settings, we've got Bluetooth MIDI, allow, turn on my CME XD Air, connecting. Boom, it's connected. All right, let's check it out. Back to Tines. We have sound. All right, let's pick a good sound to use and let's lay down some chords. All right, I think I got something pretty nice. Let's hit a tempo. All right, about 73. Um, let's swing this a little bit. All right, here we go. Let's hit record. Pretty nice. So let's play that back and take a look at the CPU meter while it's playing. In settings, down here. Not bad, we're sitting at about five or six percent for the majority of that time, but that's just one plugin. Let's throw in some drums and some other things and let's see what happens. Create new bank, go here, let's load up some samples. All right, let's record some drums in. Let's load up the Moog Model D bass and see how that plugin functions in here.
For this track, I think I want to play in some live hi-hats, so we'll give that a test. This way we can see how well the budget iPad performs with my studio mic plugged in. All right, so we need to add an audio track and we need to route it. The audio input, go to hardware input. Boom, there's my audio interface and it's in channel one. So mobile pre one is what we'll select. Record arm it, let's record. SV filter on the hi-hat just so we can roll off a little bit of the highs and even though it is a hi-hat <laughs> um, but I want it to sound a little more lo-fi ah we've hit a snag first freeze okay and it's back got to keep it real sometimes things freeze all right let's see what we got I think we made a pretty dope beat. Beatmaker 3 held up pretty well. As of right now, I've got only about four tracks going, but everything I've thrown at it so far, it's handled well. I haven't seen any distinct differences, at least in Beatmaker 3, between this and the iPad Pro. Now I'm sure the top end on the iPad Pro, as far as the amount of channels you can add and things like that, the amount of software instruments you can add, I'm sure you can push it even further than this. But this iPad's getting it done. We had one minor glitch in there. Other than that, it handled it like a champ. That has been it for this video, you guys. I always, always encourage people that are getting into music production from the beginning to start on an iPad. To be honest, the iPad really is the future of music production and it's only getting better. Cheaper hardware is getting more powerful and the software is getting better and better. Question of the day, are you someone that is considering picking up music production on the iPad? And if so, are you considering something like the iPad Pro? Or are you considering something more like the budget iPad? Let me know down in the comments. And until next time, go make something dope and I'll see you in the next video.